Level zero. You're sitting on the couch, scrolling your phone, when you hear that low rumble. Not a crack, not a roar, just a distant growl that fades as quickly as it came. You glance out the window. Gray clouds, a little breeze, nothing that feels worth worrying about. You tell yourself it is just a typical storm. That is level zero. The starting point, the baseline. Officially labeled as General Thunderstorm by the Storm Prediction Center. You might see the letters TSTM on a forecast map and think, all right, no big deal. And to be fair, it usually is not. But there is more to this level than most people realize. No severe weather is expected during a level zero outlook. There are no warnings, no tornado watches, no angry red radar blobs moving toward your house. But these storms are still real, and they can still be dangerous, just in quieter, sneakier ways. Lightning is the biggest threat. You do not need a supercell for a bolt to come crashing down out of nowhere. In fact, many lightning injuries happen on days that look like this. One minute you are walking the dog, the next, a flash hits a tree across the street. These storms might look tame, but they are charged with electricity. Then there is the rain. Even general thunderstorms can dump inches of water in a short time. That is how roads flood. That is how parking lots turn into ponds. It does not take a warning for that to happen. It just takes one slow-moving cloud sitting over the wrong spot. And let's not forget about wind. These storms can still throw sudden gusts strong enough to bring down weak branches or scatter your backyard furniture. One ordinary-looking storm in a Chicago suburb knocked out power to thousands and sent trampolines flying across fences. No warnings were ever issued. So yes, level zero might not raise alarms, but it still deserves your attention. Because storms do not need a label to cause chaos. And when the atmosphere starts to shift, when the ingredients come together just a little more aggressively, that is when things start to change. Let's move to level one. It still sounds harmless, but this time it comes with a twist. Level one, you are out running errands on a warm afternoon. The sky looks a little off. There are patches of sunlight, but also a creeping wall of clouds in the distance. Nothing dramatic. Then your phone buzzes with a weather alert. Marginal risk for severe thunderstorms in your area. You squint at it, shrug, and keep going. Marginal just sounds like a soft maybe, something that probably will not amount to much. But this is where the story starts to shift. Level 1 is the first official step into severe weather territory. The Storm Prediction Center uses the term marginal risk when the atmosphere is unstable enough to possibly support isolated severe storms. Not widespread, not long-lasting, but real, and potentially dangerous. This is when storms are limited in strength or coverage, but one or two may still turn severe in just the right conditions. That means hail up to the size of quarters, wind gusts that can knock down tree limbs or send unsecured objects tumbling down the street. Occasionally, even a brief tornado. These storms are sneaky. They are like the one person at the party who seems quiet until they flip a table. In 2018, a marginal risk day in southern Missouri surprised everyone when a quick-hitting storm produced a tornado that tore through part of a residential neighborhood. No one expected it to go that far. But the ingredients were quietly waiting. Just enough heat, just enough wind shear, just enough moisture, and that is all it takes. Level 1 also introduces a tricky mindset. Because the risk is low, people tend to ignore it. There is no sense of urgency. But these are the days when many are caught off guard. No sirens, no major warnings. Just a few clouds that suddenly explode into something much more serious. Scientifically, level 1 storms usually form along boundaries. That could be leftover outflow from a previous storm or a weak, cold front barely visible on radar. And while most cells stay below severe limits, one or two can suddenly spike in intensity. These are the storms that prompt quick warnings, short lead times, and fast impacts. The danger is not in how many storms appear. It is in how quickly one of them can go from average to damaging. So while it may say marginal, the consequences can be anything but, especially if that one rogue storm decides to show up over your neighborhood. And when the ingredients strengthen just a little more, when those isolated threats become scattered and more organized, we move into a level that's harder to brush off. Level 2 is where the atmosphere stops hinting and starts making promises. Let's take a closer look. Level 2. You step outside and instantly feel it. The air is heavier. There is no breeze. The sky looks off balance. Not dramatic, just tense. Like the atmosphere is holding its breath. This is what a level 2 day often feels like. And while the word slight may sound forgettable, the storms that follow are anything but. A slight risk means forecasters expect scattered severe storms. This is not about just one rogue cell here or there. Now we are looking at multiple storms developing across a region, each with the potential to become dangerous. It is the first level on the scale where storm coverage and intensity begin to rise in a serious way. The threats include wind gusts strong enough to break windows and topple trees, hail the size of ping pong balls or even larger. 
And yes, tornadoes become more of a concern at this level. They may still be isolated, but they can form quickly and strike with little warning. One example happened in June 2021, during what was forecast as a slight risk day across central Iowa. Storms rapidly formed in the late afternoon. Within an hour, a cluster turned severe and produced two brief tornadoes along with wind damage that took out power for thousands. No major outbreak, no high-risk warning, just a level 2. And yet, for the people in the path, it felt like a much higher level. Slight risk setups usually involve a combination of key ingredients, enough moisture near the surface, instability from daytime heating, and wind shear to organize storms and help them rotate. Often, supercells or strong multi-cell clusters develop along a cold front, a dry line, or even a leftover boundary from the day before. These are the days when you start to hear that familiar buzz on the weather radio. Watches go up. Storms begin firing along the horizon. And while some areas may be spared, Aired, others are about to get hit hard. The problem with level 2 is perception. People hear slight and assume it means not serious. But slight does not mean small. It means scattered. And that means you might be outside the impact zone or right in the middle of it. So when a level 2 shows up in your forecast, it is time to stop brushing it off. These are the storms that cause real damage, especially when people are not expecting them. And as the ingredients grow stronger and the threat becomes more organized, we move into a level that demands even more attention. Because level 3 is where the atmosphere starts taking aim, and it does not miss often. Level 3. By the time Level 3 appears in a forecast, the mood shifts, the tone in the meteorologist's voice gets heavier, the colors on the map grow darker, and people who normally ignore weather reports start paying closer attention. Because a Level 3 enhanced risk means the atmosphere is no longer just unstable. It is preparing for something widespread and potentially destructive. This level is issued when forecasters expect numerous severe storms. Not just a few, not hit or miss, but a larger outbreak with multiple storms likely to reach severe levels across a broader area. The threat has now evolved. It is no longer about if storms will form. It is about how bad they will be. Enhanced risk days often feature strong supercells capable of producing wind gusts over 70 miles per hour, hail the size of golf balls, sometimes even larger, and tornadoes that can be strong, long-tracked, and far more frequent than what we see in lower levels. On March 31st, 2023, an enhanced risk was issued for parts of the central United States. What followed was one of the most active tornado days of the year. Dozens of tornadoes touched down across multiple states, including one that tore through Little Rock, Arkansas during the afternoon rush hour. The storms moved fast, the damage was widespread, and the system grew so intense it was later upgraded to a higher risk as the outbreak unfolded. The science behind a level 3 day tells a clear story. There is high instability, deep moisture flowing in from the Gulf, and strong wind shear that allows storms to rotate and organize into lines or clusters. These can evolve into squall lines that span hundreds of miles or supercells that spin off multiple tornadoes in a single afternoon. This level often includes the risk of nighttime storms, which makes things even more dangerous. Tornadoes after dark are harder to spot and more deadly because people are less likely to receive warnings in time. Enhanced risk setups also increase the chances of power outages, travel disruptions, and emergency responses being overwhelmed. At level 3, people begin to cancel plans. Schools stay in touch with emergency managers. Storm chasers fan out across the region. And families check their safe spaces more than once. This is the level where the storms are not just dangerous. They are expected. And if the forecast trends continue, if models show a large-scale outbreak with long-track tornadoes and destructive winds covering hundreds of miles, then we move into a new category. Because level 4 is not just enhanced, it is explosive. And when that alert goes out, everything changes. Level 4. When a level 4 moderate risk is issued, the tone shifts completely. Forecast discussions become more urgent. Local news anchors start breaking into regular programming. And if you are paying attention, you can feel it. Something is coming. Something big. Moderate risk means severe storms are no longer just numerous or widespread. They are expected to be intense and long-lasting. This level is used when the environment is primed for powerful storm systems that will not just hit a few towns. They will stretch across regions, and they will leave scars behind. This is the level where strong tornadoes become far more likely. We are not just talking about short-lived spin-ups. We are talking about EF2 to EF4 tornadoes that can stay on the ground for miles. Some may form within minutes. Others may be wrapped in rain, nearly invisible until it is too late. At level 4, forecasters expect the kind of storms that tear roofs from buildings, shred power lines, and throw debris for blocks. One haunting example happened on March 2, 2012. A moderate risk was issued for parts of the Ohio Valley. That afternoon, the skies turned black. Dozens of tornadoes erupted across Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. Towns 
like Henryville were left in pieces. Entire neighborhoods vanished in a matter of minutes. The damage path was long, the impact was devastating, and it all started with a level 4 forecast. But it is not just tornadoes. Moderate risk also means the potential for hurricane force straight line winds, hail the size of baseballs, and massive squall lines that move like walls across multiple states. Power outages become widespread. Roads shut down. Emergency services struggle to keep up. Meteorologically, this level reflects near-perfect storm conditions. A loaded atmosphere with explosive instability, strong wind shear that helps storms rotate and organize, and surface triggers like cold fronts or dry lines that light the match. Forecast models start to align, pointing to one conclusion. The storm system is coming, it is organized, and it will be dangerous. At level 4, schools often close early, shelters are opened, families clear out their basements and double-check their emergency kits. You might even hear meteorologists start using words like outbreak, high impact, and life-threatening. That is how serious this gets. And here's the thing. A moderate risk may still get upgraded before the day is done. Some of the worst tornado outbreaks in history began as level 4 forecasts and escalated once the first storms fired up. When the atmosphere hits critical mass, it does not hold back. So what happens when every red flag is waving? When confidence is sky high and the potential for devastation is unmistakable? That is when level 5 is issued. The final level. The rarest alert. The one that means the worst case scenario is no longer just a possibility. It is on the doorstep. Level 5. When a level 5 high risk appears on the map, it is never routine. The air feels wrong, the forecasts feel heavier, the tension is unmistakable. This level is reserved for the worst case scenarios. Forecasters are no longer warning of what might happen. They are sounding the alarm about what almost certainly will. Level 5 is the very top of the risk scale, the rarest and most extreme threat category the Storm Prediction Center can issue. It does not appear often, and when it does, everyone pays attention. The conditions are not just dangerous, they are primed for widespread destruction. It takes a very specific combination of ingredients to trigger a high-risk forecast. There is extreme instability in the atmosphere, high humidity flowing in from the gulf, and strong wind shear from the surface all the way to the upper levels. Add a strong lifting mechanism, such as a cold front or dry line, and you have a recipe that almost guarantees severe weather will erupt. And when it does, it will not be ordinary. Level 5 often means a tornado outbreak is imminent, not brief, weak tornadoes that spin up and disappear. We are talking about violent, long-track tornadoes, the kind that stay on the ground for 30 miles or more. Some of them widen to over a mile. They rip trees from the earth, shred homes into splinters, and leave behind nothing but the foundations where lives once played out. One of the most devastating examples happened on April 27, 2011. A high risk was declared across the Deep South. That day turned into one of the deadliest tornado outbreaks in modern history. Over 300 tornadoes were reported within a three-day span. Cities like Tuscaloosa and Hackleburg were hit by massive, EF4 and EF5 tornadoes. Neighborhoods were erased. Families were changed forever. But tornadoes are not the only concern. Level 5 can also bring powerful windstorms known as derechos. These systems produce widespread wind damage as they sweep across entire regions. Winds can reach hurricane force and move so quickly that warnings sometimes arrive only minutes before impact. They knock out power to millions and flatten everything in their path. When a high risk is issued, normal routines stop. Schools may cancel classes before the first drop of rain. Emergency operation centers go into full activation. Meteorologists speak with urgency. People double-check batteries, batteries, storm shelters, and emergency kits. The atmosphere becomes the lead story everywhere because when a level 5 is in effect, the margin for error disappears. Delays can cost lives. Warnings must be taken seriously. And even preparation may not be enough for those directly in the path. This is the highest level the current system offers. Level 5 is the ceiling, the final alert. But that raises a question. What if the atmosphere continues to evolve? What happens when climate extremes push beyond the boundaries of this 5-step scale? What if the next generation of storms outgrows the warnings we already know? We have covered every official level, from calm to chaos. But there are still stories left untold, forgotten events, rare anomalies, and patterns we have only just begun to understand. If level 5 is where the scale ends, maybe that is where the next chapter begins.